you are still watching Waves. Originating from a declaration by the United Nations General Assembly in December 1994, this day commemorates the inaugural gathering of the UN Working Group on Indigenous Populations within the Subcommission on the Promotion and Protection of Human Rights, held in 1982. The International Day of the World's Indigenous People takes place annually August 9th, that's today. This observance serves as a platform to amplify awareness about the rights of indigenous communities across the globe and to champion their protection. Additionally, this occasion acknowledges the noteworthy accomplishments and valuable contributions of indigenous individuals towards addressing global concerns, including environmental safeguarding. So, indigenous people. Yeah, I know. Do we have, I think, when, well, particularly for me, when we talk about indigenous people, I think about people in the Amazons, in the deep Amazon forests I'm, I'm of sure Brazil, we have those kind of in America. Somewhere in, you know, in what's all those places in the north and all those regional, I, I don't know. rural areas. And yeah, well, it, it is possible because Nigeria has a lot of, yeah. an unbelievable number of ethnic groups. And most of us don't even know up to 50 of them. So it is possible we might have indigenous people, even in the southeast, southwest, people we're not even aware of yet. Yeah. So, yeah, Jennifer, it's good to celebrate idea? them. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer has no idea about this. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, um, well, it, you know, this, for me, I feel like this is, they say, you know, it's a, it's a even though it's a mouthful, it's yeah. called the... International Declaration of United Nations, and this is the working group of indigenous populations within a, a certain, you know, and it's the major thing is about the protection of human rights, mm -hmm. you know, and this has been since 1982. So it's been long, and you know, the whole idea of the day is to amplify awareness and the fact that we need to protect you know, human rights. human rights, and for those people who have had, and it also showcases, you know, the accomplishments mm. and some of the other things that have been accomplished by indigenous people within that environment, and just yeah. saying, okay, these people can do more, and also mm. encouraging other people to want to be, you know, yeah, and to you want know what? to involve themselves within, within the system, and do something for the society, and make or make a name for yourself or establish something within the society. Yeah. I was going to say that one thing that we should applaud indigenous people for is there's just something about them and conserving, preserving nature. Mm. And I think the United Nations actually acknowledges that. Like, um, for instance, deep in the forests of Brazil, the Amazon, there are still people who go about naked. Now, they live like legit naked. And obviously, I would not exist in a community like that. Even the Zulu tribe in South Africa, they still have all those things. But another thing they have, aside from being naked and all what not, all the tradition is, they have a certain love for nature. Like some of them go as far as worshiping nature and worshiping trees. But I mean, I don't do that. But I appreciate the fact that they, it's important to them to conserve nature. Yeah. You know. So yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. Jennifer, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, um, there's a man um, in Ondo State, a 45 years old football coach in Ondo State, who killed, well, mutilated his um, his ex girlfriend. Uh. So he has been arrested. Well, they said allegedly because um, he's not, he hasn't accepted that he actually killed the lady. Um, according to him, he said that um, she called him and reached out to him and said she wanted um, she wanted help. So obviously financial help, and he told her to come meet him um, at his dad's house. So she got there. When she got there, he said um, he was going to get her a drink. So he bought her Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. and by the time she drank it, or before she drank it, she slumped. Oh. Now, while she slumped, he decided or he proceeded to pour hot water on her. So when they, when, they, when they found the body, they found like hot water bones, oh, and they found out that, that he had also harvested her her intestine and her private part. Now, when they um, when they questioned him, he said that when she slumped, he thought that the hot water was going to revive her, so he was scared, right? So his fear was she slumped in my house, and because he was scared, he couldn't call for help, he couldn't do anything. That's why he tied her 
But then they asked him a question. If you were scared, yeah. why did you harvest her intestine? Why did you remove her private parts? And he had nothing to say. He just said, oh, he was scared. So, but if you were scared, why did you have to go to that extent to do that? Right? Because the, the entire story isn't making any sense. But he's yeah. still standing on that. And I don't know what's going to happen It's just to the him. cruelty for me. Yeah. But like, they, need to, they need to do something about that because it's, it's very scary. I watched mm -hmm. that and I felt... I, I wasn't sure how to feel because, you know, you listen to the story and you're wondering... And even the policemen, as much as we feel that our police, um, you know, our police units and are not doing... Opt they are not performing optimally. But in this case, he was actually questioning the guy according to what he was saying and yeah. asking... You claim you are scared, but you mutilated. I, I think at the point where, first of all, you poured hot water and you're wondering, usually when someone faints, it's, usually it's you ice sprinkle water. Yeah, water sprinkle, or, yeah. Yeah, but if, even if you would sprinkle cold water mm -hmm. because that should get some reaction. But hot water, so in my opinion, he was going to mutilate the body either way. Yeah. yeah? Mm. So the hot water was a process to soften the skin. It might, because I don't know how you, someone slumps and the first thing that comes to you is removing the intestine and the private part. That's already going tending towards the, you know, spiritual, yeah. ritual yeah. angle. Yeah. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, he has action. been caught and he doesn't want to have to, you know, voice that out. So I'm understanding that that's probably the reason why he's giving this, you know, recount as his recount of events of what happened, but um, we can see clearly, and anybody can see clearly yeah. that you know, it's just the denial for me. He hasn't been caught red handed. It's the uh, law actually states that you're you're not guilty until, until it's proven yeah. guilty. That's crazy. Sandy, what do you find in the news? All right, Ooh, away from that. It's a <laughs> terrible story. So, um, yeah, um, for me, it's the the royal family, Harry and his beloved wife, Megan. Now, sometime last month, there was a breaking news that they had decided to, you know, try out living separately for a while just to carry on with each other's business and see how that happens. Today, again, they are back in the news. And the reason being that, hear this, the royal family is distance, distancing itself from Harry and Megan. After Harry's, uh, his royal highness title was stripped from website, expert warns that the Sussexes are seen as unpredictable and unreliable, but they need the royal links for their brand. Now, it's not just when, when they removed them from the website, they actually took them to the bottom, bottom, bottom of the list, uh, uh, list ranking of the royals, where like former Duke of Edinburgh, or so the king that wasn't his uncle that married to Hollywood, down, down, down that list. So it's not a good thing for them. And I'm actually, I mean, I love the royals. I'm not exactly loyal to them, but I, I just love them. And it worries me. I worry for Harry. I feel like Meghan can so easily find herself back into Hollywood. And even though that their show, I mean, it, it did reasonably well on Netflix. Um, and then Meghan's podcast didn't really go so well so far. But I, I just generally worry for Harry. Yeah, I can imagine because um, really to even buttress that, you know, a lot of changes have been happening within the mm. royal family. You mm -hmm. know, the, there's now a king and queen. Yes. Um, and then thereby now the... Um, the prince and duchess mm -hmm. have, have now become the prince and princess of, um, you know. So it, it's, 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 it's a lot of changes have been happening. And part yeah. of this, part of Harry's, you know, uh, what's the word? What word would I use now? Royalty. Yeah. Disroyalty. <laughs> okay. He's been disroyaled. Yeah. So, but come to think of it, actually, yeah. sorry to cut you. The fact that Prince William now has like three kids, so he just goes further down the line. I don't, I don't, I it's, don't think it really affects him that much, except for the title. Like the title has a certain prestige. Well, the title has a lot that it brings to the table. Yeah, yeah. it has that's a true. lot yeah. that it brings to the table. And taking him off and the title off him takes all those privileges off yeah. him too, and the family. So even their kids are mm. going to have to at some point suffer for this. But yeah. um, yeah. well, at this point, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. I'll see you after the break.